The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at heart attack symptoms. A heart attack is also known, aka, as a myocardial infarction. Now in this section, I'm going to explain the symptoms if you think that you were having a heart attack or someone you know of, and also what you should do if you suspect somebody's having a heart attack. <clears throat> So first off, uh, start with a quick primer of what exactly is a heart attack in the first place. So I explained this in some previous videos on uh, coronary angiograms and um, heart disease. But if you look at this little graphic here on the anatomy board, <clears throat> what you'll see here is the blood supply of the front part of your heart blown up or enlarged. And as you can see here, there's uh, some debris here, some cholesterol, lipid laden, um, barrier to blood flow so the key thing to remember is that like every other organ in your body every organ in your body requires a blood supply the heart is no different so what happens here is um, when you have this impediment to flow of the blood to supply the muscles of the heart uh, the muscles of the heart basically starve and die and that event is called a myocardial infarction street name heart attack so what are the symptoms to watch out for in someone uh, suspected of having a heart attack well I'll go through them there's a cluster of different things um, because a heart attack is such a systemically catastrophic event there's not just one single symptom there's a bunch of constitutional signs so these can range from first of all dizziness and the dizziness is because if the muscle of the heart is damaged, the pumping um, effort of the heart also can be reduced. So if that occurs, you get less perfusion up to the brain. So that leads to a sensation of dizziness. The other problem is that again, because of loss of some of the contractility of the, some of the muscles of the heart, which are dying or dead, you can get a back pressure of blood through the plumbing back up to the lungs which then causes a hydrostatic force pushing um, liquid into the, into the lung tissue. So that can make you short of breath. <clears throat> and actually, if we, if we listen with a stethoscope, you can actually hear <coughs> excuse me, crackles in the lungs, which is the fluid uh, built up. Um, in addition to that, because it's such a catastrophic um, event, the brain takes notice. Um, and your fight or flight response will kick in your uh, adrenergic system. So you'll get symptoms in addition ranging from um, s very sweaty, cold, clammy fingers and hands <clears throat> to actual profuse sweating over the, um, over the torso and head. Uh, other things to look out for is um, nausea. And again, that's because of the glut of flow through the, um, through the vascular system. So you get a back pressure <clears throat> uh, causing a, a congestion feeling. Um, and then, of course, the, most, the dominant sign would be chest pain. Now, the chest pain of a heart attack is typically very specific. It's not like something stabbing you with a, or someone stabbing you with a lance or a sword. It's typically a squeezing sensation around the chest. People describe it uh, by things like it felt like, like someone was sitting on my chest or, I, or my chest was in a vice grip and something was just squeezing it. In this diagram here, uh, this actor is showing you um, a specific sign that we call Levine sign or Levine sign. What that is is um, one, a, a doctor by that name some time ago discovered that in a lot of patients who were in the midst of a heart attack, they'll clutch their heart. Oh, sorry, this is gonna be reversed when you see it in the video. Your, your heart is actually on the left side for the vast majority of people. But the individual affected will clutch their, their chest with their hand, describing the pain. And that is a, a symptom that tends to be associated or pretty specific for heart attack. Now, you have to remember there's other structures in the chest in this same position as well. There's also your esophagus and stomach. So sometimes heartburn pain can also masquerade as a heart attack. 
Uh, and then there's also lung tissue in that area. So pleurisy or um, say a blood clot, pulmonary embolus, um, they can also masquerade as a uh, heart attack. But in the majority of cases, if you see this sign here with these other constellation of uh, symptoms, the, the shortness of breath, the nausea, the sweats, the general feeling of, of malaise and fatigue, um, the sweaty skin, uh, that, that cluster of uh, features is pretty uh, specific. I wouldn't say specific, but most more specific for heart attack than any of the other um, potential causes of chest pain. So if you were noticing these uh, symptoms in yourself or someone around you, what should you do? Should you try to treat it yourself at home? Answer that is no. The first thing you do is if you have aspirin available is chew to aspirin. The reason for that is, again, if we go back to that slide with the um, showing the clot, the aspirin is basically a form of chemical drainal. It helps to thin your bloodstream and allow more blood flow or perfusion to get past this, uh, this impediment. So that can be um, life-saving to the tissues involved, the, the muscle that, that's uh, being deprived of oxygen. Now, the next thing you should do is call for an ambulance to take you to the emergency room to the ER. Now, it's pretty obvious why you shouldn't drive yourself to the ER, and that's because of the dizziness and the possibility you could actually pass out or blank out on the way to the hospital and crash and kill yourself or somebody else on the street, or both. <clears throat> but it may, it may seem less obvious why someone else, say you have a friend there, also shouldn't drive you to the hospital, and you should rely on an ambulance. The reason for that is, um, in an ambulance, there's access to a drug called nitroglycerin, which is something that you um, spray under the tongue. And what that does is, again, it dilates the blood vessels um, supplying the heart. So again, looking at this picture here, if you can dilate that, that um, pipe there, you can get more flow past the impediment. So again, that can save some of the heart tissue that's being um, starved of oxygen. You typically don't have nitroglycerin in your car. The next thing you don't have in your car is oxygen. In an ambulance, one of the first things that they'll do is start putting oxygen on you through a face mask. Again, that's to make the work of the heart easier and to provide an additional impetus or stimulus to that muscle tissue that's dying of oxygen uh, starvation to try to save that muscle tissue. In, in a heart attack, uh, every second counts. The longer that, this, um, the, longer that the flow is uh, cut off from the tissues distal to it, the, the muscle, the more muscle is going to die. If you can, if you can get um, flow reestablished to these areas that are being affected, um, in some cases the muscle tissue may just be stunned but not actually dead. So you can uh, revive it by quick action. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is um, in short summary, as short and sweet as I could put it, uh, the symptoms of a heart attack and what you should do if you suspect that you or someone around you is actually having a heart attack at the moment. Knowing this stuff can be life-saving. Thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe so I can keep you up to date as I upload new videos and discourses. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.